Welcome to the Chem Doctor, and the purpose of this pre presentation is to calculate the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of sulfuric acid solution. Now, if you're in general chemistry or an advanced placement course in chemistry and uh, or even a high school class in chemistry where you're dealing with acid-base uh, reactions and you've learned about pH, you're probably wondering why I want to make, make a video about determining the pH of a sulfuric acid solution since sulfuric acid is a strong acid. And that's a good question. Uh, if you look closely at uh, the question that I'm asking here, we're dealing with a solution of sulfuric acid that is 0.1 molar. Now, here's the issue with this. Sulfuric acid is a polyprotic acid, so it undergoes uh, its ionization in two steps. So if we look at the first step of the reaction, uh, which would be H2SO4 in water. The first step of the ion, uh, the first ionization is a strong acid ionization, as we would expect. And so we can determine essentially the hydronium concentration in theory off of the first step, which most of the time is true. And uh, basically is true for solutions. Uh, that are greater than one molar. And in most problems, you're going to be asked to calculate uh, the pH of, of a sulfuric acid solution off of molarity concentrations that are pretty high, like one molar or higher. But notice that we're dealing with a slightly lower concentration of sulfuric acid. So here's where the problem comes in. If we just assume that we're going to calculate the pH off of uh, the initial concentration of the sulfuric acid, since this is a strong acid step, we would set, or we can set the reaction up to look like this. So we start with a 0.1 molar solution of H2SO4. Initially, there's zero of the H3O plus and zero of the HSO4 minus. Being a strong uh, acid, the first, th this is going to be a non-equilibrium step. So the H2SO4 is going to dissociate or ionize to 100%. So the, the concentration of H2SO4 is going to go to zero and we're going to produce stoichiometric amounts of the uh, hydronium ion and HSO4 minus. Now uh, the novice would start here, stop here and if we took the pH of this solution right now we would do that by taking minus the log of concentration uh, 0.1 molar and we would get a pH equal to 1. And I'm going to go ahead and just establish that right now. Now, <clears throat> in the second step of this reaction, however, we have the ionization of HSO4 minus, which is a weak acid by uh, contrast to H2SO4. So we can write its ionization this way, where we're going to form another mole of hydronium plus uh, the anion SO4 minus 2 or sulfate. Now if we were to calculate the uh, concentration of hydronium by this step, all right, uh, let me put the Ka in. So the Ka for this step is actually 0 0.012. Now if we use classic methods uh, to, to calculate the hydronium concentration at this step, uh, we would set up our ICE table where we have an initial 0.1 molar of the, sulf of the uh, hydrogen sulfate. All right, so we're going to pull this concentration down. This is a common ion. And then we're also going to have a 0 0.1 molar in the H3O+. Plus. All right, and then initially we're going to have zero of the sulfate. Now if you set up your table right, then what's going to happen next is we're going to see uh, some ionization of the HSO4 minus. We'll show it this way. This will be minus x. Then the hydronium is going to be 0 0.1 molar plus x. And then the sulfate is going to be x. Now normally we, we would set up our, our Ka expression. This would be 0 0.012 for the constant. Note that this equilibrium constant is large. Right, I'm going to underline that. For, an, for a weak acid equilibrium constant, this is large. It's only, uh, it's a magnitude of 10 to the minus 2. And note 
that we're using a lower concentration, initial concentration of the acid. And we've already learned with weak acids that with larger equilibrium constants and lower concentrations of a weak acid, that your percent ionization increases. And that's what's going to cause the problem here. So if we set this up now to solve for x, and we neglect the x out of the gate, so we can drop the sum, you see this is what we end up with. And you're probably looking at that and going, yeah, so I don't see what the problem is. So if we go ahead and we solve the rest of the way, all right, and now we calculate our percent dissociation. Our x value is 0 0.012 divided by our initial concentration, which is 0.1, and the whole thing's times 100. And you can see our percent dissociation is 12%. And we've broken the 5% rule. So dropping the x is not a valid assumption here. So dropping x is invalid. All right, so we need to go back to this original expression over here to actually find x. And as a result of that, that also means that this issue right here, the formation of the H3O plus, is also going to change. So let's go ahead and pursue that. Now I'm going to set up my equilibrium expression over again. It's going to be 0 0.012. And it's going to be equal to x times 0 0.1 molar plus x for the hydronium over 0 0.1 molar minus x for the HSO4 minus. Now, you can see that we've got a quadratic equation here. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the viewer take care of the algebra to simplify the situation. Um, here's what the binomial is going to look like. So we're going to end up with x squared plus 0.112x minus 0.0012 and the whole thing is equal to 0. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug this into a quadratic equation. So my x value is going to equal minus b which is 0 0.112 all right, plus or minus <laughs> the square root of the zero point, this is the b, 0 0.112, and that's quantity squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, uh, times c, which is a negative 0 0.0012 now. And then this whole thing is over 2a. Now I know some of you are looking at, at me going, why is he doing this when we have n solve? And all I can say to you is that uh, you need to make sh sure, especially if you're in, in an advanced placement chem class, that you can set up these equations, set up these, these problems, and, and calculate them all the way through. And if you're dependent, if you're dependent on solving a weak acid problem by, by inputting these equations in advance and not really thinking through, this is going to get you into trouble. Now, uh, let me go through and emphasize each each of these factors so it's clear to the to the viewer that's that's following along by hand the way I did this. So this guy right here is your A. This guy right here is the B, and this guy right here, the negative, is C. All right, now. Uh, carrying through on the calculation, my x value for this is going to be 0 0.0098. The viewer is going to notice that you are going to get two answers here, but use common sense. You can't utilize the, the factor that you're going to get out of this that's negative. So you just automatically drop that solution and go with, go, go with the one that, that gives you a, a reasonable number. So my x value here is going to be 0 0.0098. So, to finish, that means that the H3O plus is actually going to be 0 0.1, 
plus 0.0098 molar. So the total is uh, 0 0.1098. Now when we take the pH of this value, it's going to be, whoops, minus the log of uh, 0 0.1098 and we're going to get for a pH um, 0 0.96. And you can see when you compare the values that the pH that we get by taking the second step into account is lower than the pH that we got um, by, by not taking into, into account the second step. Now when you compare 0.96 to 1, the viewer might be going, well, there's not really that much difference here. But the reason I chose an initial concentration of 0.1 molar H2SO4 is because once we get under and let me, I'll go ahead and put this in words. Once we get under x less than uh, 1 molar by at least 0.1, so 1 tenth, then the second step becomes important because you can see when we, when we started through uh, the system that we violated the 5% rule without any problem at all. So you need to pay attention when you're asked to calculate the pH of a 1 mol uh, of, of of a solution of sulfuric acid and, and look at the concentration. And if you're one-tenth or less underneath one molar, then you're going to need to take into account uh, both steps of the ionization in order to calculate the pH. And this becomes more extreme as you get smaller. Like if we had actually utilized a, uh, a solution of sulfuric acid that was 0.01 molar, then you would see this pH difference is even more striking. So. With that, I'd like to go ahead and close the video. I'd like to thank the viewer for taking the time to watch Chem Doctor. You can find more videos at www.chemdoctor.org.